Hey guys, Lucas here. I hope you're doing well. We've been thinking a lot lately about guitar necks and wondered if I might be able to provide a little bit of information that might be beneficial to somebody who may be shopping for their first guitar or maybe somebody that's been playing for a little while and can't quite figure out why one guitar feels better than another. So over the years, I've obviously played a lot of different guitars. I've been playing for over 35 years. I've taught for, for, for quite a while. Um, I've written jingles and done some session work and things like that as well. So I haven't, uh, I, you know, I've done quite a few things. I haven't played all the guitars, but I've play, played quite a few. And I found early on when I was first starting, I never really got any information on, on the neck. I was never really educated about some of these things. And so I, I struggled to understand why one guitar felt great and I struggled with the other one. So hopefully this is a benefit to you. Um, so. The first spec that I would mention is the scale length. So the scale length is basically the distance between the nut of the guitar and the bridge. And that can vary depending on the model or the manufacturer uh, uh, of the guitar. Typically Gibsons are 24 and 3 quarter inches between those two points. Uh, Fender Telecasters, Fender Stratocasters are generally 25 and a half inches. I think PRS is 25. And of course, there are a few exceptions to that in, 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 in some of these manufacturers' lineups. Uh, but, but those are kind of the most common ones that you're going to find. The reason that scale length is important is because it can affect the feel of the guitar when you play it. Uh, for example, uh, if you put the same gauge of strings on a Gibson, Les Paul, for example, and on a Stratocaster, they're going to feel pretty different. And the reason for that is that there's greater string tension uh, on the on the longer scale length guitar than on the shorter ones. So a 9 to 42 gauge string here is going to feel pretty slinky, uh, you know, while well, it's, it's slinky anyway, but it's going to feel more so than it would on the Stratocaster. So the scale length can affect the feel. Uh, also, too, the distance between the frets um, changes a little bit too. So if you're doing a lot of that th three note per string stuff, um, it, it may be more comfortable to get those stretches in uh, on a neck where the um, frets are just that much closer together. So scale length is pretty important in the overall feel of an instrument. The next thing I would talk about is fingerboard radius. So typically when we talk about fingerboard radius, you know, it's defined as a number uh, and, it's, and it's based on the circumference of a circle. So on a vintage uh, fender, fender like my Stratocaster here, uh, that guy has a seven and a quarter inch radius. So if we drew uh, a seven and a quarter inch uh, a, a a circle, that curvature becomes the curve on the fingerboard, and it's it's fairly round. And 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 some people will say that the challenge with that is that you know as you go to bend a string upwards, you know you bend your note. Uh, what happens is you run into the curve of the of the shape of the fingerboard and the note will choke out So you have to have your strings higher in order to be able to do that um, I have my action pretty low actually on this this Stratocaster and generally don't have that kind of a problem But I can't get it as low as I can get it on my Gibson and so you know the 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 action or or the the distance of between the the string and the fingerboard has an impact on the playability as well. You know, you have less time required to actually uh, fret the note, and, and and less strength required to kind of push down on it. So there there is some some logic to why a flatter radius might feel easier to play than a more vintage radius if you're doing lead work. Some folks will argue that a rounder radius is more comfortable for playing chords, and I think there's some truth to that as well. The compromise is a compound radius, which is what you would find on something like a, a Warmoth a guitar neck, for example. They'll start the fingerboard radius at a 10 uh, down here, which is still pretty flat. That's actually flatter than most modern Fender Telecasters and Stratocasters are actually usually a nine, uh, a nine and a half. So you'd have a seven and a quarter inch on a vintage, right, which is going to be kind of like this. <laughs> then, <coughs> then, excuse me, um, a nine and a half inch radius on the modern stuff. 12 inch radius is you find some fenders that have a 12 inch radius although I don't know how common it is but you will find them and also uh, 12 inch radius on the Gibsons. The uh, 
shred guitars that you tend to find. You know, I have a 1992 Ibanez RG sitting in the corner over the RG550 from Japan. I mean, it's almost flat. It's, I think it's a 16 or 15 and some, some odd inch radius, uh, nearly 16 inches. So it's quite flat. But again, it, the whole point on that guitar is to be able to be as playable as possible so we can do all that legato and fast runs and all that kind of good stuff. The second, or sorry, the third thing that I would discuss with you would be actually the shape of the back of the neck. This can vary quite a bit too between manufacturers and even among the same manufacturer. Fender has multiple different shapes as does Gibson. Uh, and that impacts how that neck is going to feel in your hand. And it can, it can contribute to things like fatigue in your hand or tendonitis, or it can make the guitar more comfortable and easier to play. Um, most fenders that you're going to find these days uh, use what's called a modern C. A lot of manufacturers use this. It's a modern C profile. You can go online and Google that and, and, and find all kinds of information about the different shapes. But you know, some are, are you know like a, a, a modern C or a D, which is kind of bigger and chunkier. Again, a soft V. All these different types of, of things come into play as to how this thing feels when you play it. And, and the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is so that when you go into the guitar store and you pick up a guitar and you play this and you're like, oh wow, I really like this one, you might want to make note of some of these specifications. You can ask the, the salesperson in the store, if they don't know, just write down the, the model and the year and the guitar and go home and, and research that. Make sure you get this information because it took me a lot of kind of searching and experimenting and playing around until I kind of found out where I want to be. And, uh, and, 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 you know, hopefully maybe this will save you a little bit of time. So the shape on the back of the neck is, is important. The, the other thing too is going to be the fingerboard material, whatever is used on the fingerboard. Typically, uh, you know, it was really common to either have, you know, maple, like what we've got here, which actually like quite a bit in the early days I wasn't crazy about it but now that I have it I, I quite like it um, my preference though uh, is rosewood which is on my um, my telly here and this is this is um, uh, Indian rosewood it's very difficult it's getting more difficult to get rosewood these days um, Brazilian rosewood is the stuff that you would find on the old really vintage uh, instruments but because of environmental reasons it's difficult to find anymore and be, and with that being said Manufacturers have been forced to either find alternatives, uh, uh, well, that's what they've been forced to do is find alternatives. So in the case of Gibson, for example, um, a lot of their guitars are using baked maple. Um, and for me, I like that baked maple is kind of dimensionally stable. That's one of the, I guess, selling points of it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the process is, but they essentially remove the moisture from the wood and then under high pressure find a way to reintroduce moisture and create a more stable a piece of wood that that's probably a half truth in the way I'm describing that but essentially and I've had good luck with this guitar this is a 2014 Les Paul Studio I've never had to adjust the neck on it but I'm not crazy about how it feels under my fingers. Um, you know I find it kind of almost sticky and, uh, and, and even though I clean it and take care of it uh, I just, I just, I've never bonded with it in the same way that I would with rose, rosewood. To me, rosewood feels nice and slick. It's easy to take care of and easy to keep clean, and uh, and and I just find it much, much more comfortable to play. You, so you could have maple, rosewood, baked maple, ebony, palfero. There's all these different types of things that you could have. So again, that fingerboard material is going to again affect how it feels when you play the instrument. So make note. The nut, the width here also can change depending on the manufacturer or even from model to model. So, you know, if you're, if you're younger and you're still growing, you got smaller hands, you know, you might be more comfortable on a shorter scale with a narrower width here, um, you know, rather than, than, than going the full, full size, uh, you know, strat. You may, may, you may find that some things are a little easier to play uh, with, a, with a narrower nut at the, uh, uh, narrower width here at the nut as well. So. Uh, just a few things that to be aware of, you know, there's also conversion necks as well. Uh, Warmoth does, in addition to the compound radius from the 10 to the 16, they do conversion necks for, for strats and I think for tellies as well, which will allow you to convert the neck from a 25, the scale length from a 25 and a half inch scale to a 24 and three quarter inch scale just by bolting that neck onto the guitar, which is actually kind of cool too. There's also um, scalloping. You know, if you're one of these shred guys, 
you might be into something like this. So I don't know if you can make this out, but this fingerboard has been scalloped. So what they do is essentially scoop away the material uh, between the frets. So you're making less contact with the uh, fingerboard. And again, this is supposed to lead to uh, more comfortable sort of playability. The nice thing about doing this with rosewood is you don't have to refinish anything. You just remove the wood and you're done. If you do this on maple, then you then have to refinish it afterwards. So, so that's kind of the, the quick Coles notes, I guess, version on some of the different specifications you can have on guitar necks. Um, I guess the final thing I would, I would mention too is, is the fret material and the fret size. You know, tall frets, narrow frets, wide frets, low frets, I mean, stainless steel, nickel cryogenically frozen frets like Gibson does. I mean, it, it, it really is a proverbial rabbit hole that you can fall down. But if you have some idea of what some of these things are when, you, when you're searching for a guitar, you know, I, for me personally, uh, I, I, I'm big on, on the neck. That's a key thing for me because that's where you spend all your time. If the neck is comfortable and, and it plays well and, and, and you're not, you know, struggling to play something on that guitar that that you can you can achieve on another guitar then then i think you're going to probably want to spend more time with that instrument you'll probably bond with that instrument a little bit better so i usually start with the neck then from there i look at the the, the, the tone wood I, I like alder personally it's lightweight and and all those traditional you know sort of single coil tones that you would get out of a strat or a telly can be found with with alder um but that's based on the personal preference and the style of music that I play. A lot of funk and blues and that kind of stuff. So so hopefully that helps. So scale length, fingerboard radius, the shape or the contour of the neck, um, the fingerboard material, the width of the nut, and the actual frets themselves. All of these things come into play to come together to um, create your experience on the instrument. If you have a little bit of knowledge about those things and hopefully you'll spend less time seeking that out. And, and more time playing. So hopefully this has been of some help for you. Uh, please, in your comments section, you know, let me know what, what 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 do you like? What's your preference? You know, do you like a 12 inch radius? Do you like rosewood? Do you like maple? What what do you guys uh, like to play? You know, I'm really interested to hear what what your feedback is, and and uh, hopefully this this video will be of some benefit to uh, to somebody out there. Thanks again for watching.